Yo, this is Bob. Welcome to the vlog. Today, we are on a uh, adventure of sorts. We're gonna go on a record hunt, and also we are going to see John McLaughlin in Indianapolis. Uh, we are about to le leave the city, so stay tuned. Like, subscribe, tell a friend, leave a comment. Um, yeah, let's let's start the vlog. Yo, so I'm at the McLaughlin show. We're about 15 minutes from go time. It's gonna be good. Here we go.
what's up? I'm back. Um, it was a long day and um, I had very little sleep last night before I had to get up and and I get back at it. So it's been an even longer day today, but I, I have found a few minutes to come and give my thoughts about um, being in Indianapolis yesterday and going to the John McLaughlin show with um, Jimmy Herring as well was there, uh, Jimmy's band. And basically what happened is Jimmy Herring and uh, his band played first and then uh, McLaughlin and uh, the Fourth Dimension and then the last set was a, a Mahavishnu set which was next level. All three sets were fantastic. I was really worried after uh, Jimmy uh, and the guys played the first set like, oh no, I don't think it can get much better than that. And then um, John brought his guys out and they just absolutely took it to another level. Great show, fantastic. So glad I went. John is still John. You know, a lot of guys, when they get older, their hands stop working quite as well as they used to. Um, he seems fine. Uh, it's really sad that this is probably going to be his last tour because he's he's still playing really well. Um, Paul Reed Smith guitars all around. Uh, Jimmy was using one and... Uh, John was as well. Paul even made John a special double neck guitar um, that was killer because, I don't know if you know this, but back in the Mahavishnu days, John used a double neck guitar. And um, so Paul Reed Smith made him a well. Somebody at Paul Reed Smith made John uh, a double neck for this tour. And I believe it's going to be auctioned off for some type of charity at the uh, after the last show. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, let's see. Um, yes. Did quite a bit of vinyl shopping while I was in Indy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and touch on these records real fast. These are just the ones that I got in Indy. Uh, I did get some other records this week. We might talk about them, but I doubt it. I'm going to be super quick with this because we've got other stuff to do. The first record that I got was, boom, Black Sabbath, Paranoid. Now, there's a little wear around the edges of this, uh, but overall, this is a really clean copy. Green label, U.S. First Press. Uh, with the mis, uh, mis uh, spelled, uh, um, I believe it's Ozzy's name. They misspell it on this one, so I, this is just the misprint or whatever. I don't think it really adds much value. But anyway, Black Sabbath Paranoid. Been looking for this for quite some time. You know what tracks are on here. All the stuff, War Pigs and you know Planet Caravan and Iron Man and all that. This is the stuff right here. It's hard, uh, believe it or not, Sabbath stuff is hard to find on vinyl. So I was really, really happy to get that. Next, boom. Jimi Hendrix Experience. Are you experienced? Very nice copy of this uh, particular record. Uh, you know, really, you buy this record for the track, Are You Experienced? I mean, it's got some other things on it. Uh, the Wind Cries Mary and Third oh, well, Third Stones on here and uh, Foxy Lady and uh, Fire. I mean, it's got a bunch. Obviously, this is an iconic album. We all know every song on here. Come on. But this is a nice uh, original pressing and uh, got that. Didn't have it. I mean, obviously have it on CD and on other formats, MP3, etc. But did not have it on vinyl. Next, I bought this Bob Marley. This is the uh, Rebel Music uh, compilation uh, put out in 86. This uh, I bought this because I don't have a lot of Marley and um, 
on vinyl that is and this is on the um, Tough Gong uh, label which is out of Jamaica so I thought that was cool because of the obvious reasons you know if you can get something if you can get some reggae music that is out of Jamaica I mean that's it's a little cooler, right? Uh, anyway, next, going to a record that I have been searching for. And I found it in Indianapolis. Stevie Wonder's Inner Visions. Folks, there's a song on this called Too High. And it is one funky track. So, um, yes. Stevie Wonder's Inner Visions. You have to have this. This is beautiful, by the way. Original Press. Boom. Uh, all these are in really great shape, actually. But moving right along, we're about to get into the serious stuff. That's right, folks. The expensive records. Uh, first things first. Boom. Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. Now, this is... Just a spectacular sounding album. This is one of those times where if you've not heard this record on vinyl, I can honestly say that you're missing out on one of the greatest sonic experiences that a person can have. This is a rather expensive and rare record. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of copies available, but this is a really nice one. First press. And I had to have it. And I got it. Super stoked on that. In the same vein, Al Green's Let's stay together. The Reverend Al Green. Okay. This is before he was a Reverend. Uh, a handsome looking uh, album here. Original press on high records. Amazing album. Buy this. Listen to this. It will, it will improve your musicianship at least 10 to 20 fold or not uh, let's see what else we got here this is Steely Dan's um, can't buy a thrill this was in super minty condition and uh, even though I already had the um, first press of this this one is so super clean, I had to get it. So, you can't leave that behind. You just can't. And last but not least, another Sabbath record. Uh, this was in the new arrivals at the shop there. And there is a song on here called Symptom of the Universe that if you've never heard, you should listen to it right away because it is a magical Black Sabbath song. I'm super stoked, man, because Sabbath is hard to get. So, bam. Those were my Indianapolis record scores. Now, went to two shops. The first shop that I went to was Karma Music. Bam. Which was more of a head shop. It was like a head shop, record shop. And uh, I got that um, Marley... Uh, imagine that. I got the uh, Bob um, compilation there, and they had some good stuff. I got one more album there, but I haven't shown it to you yet. Uh, it's okay if you're if you're in that area, you could probably stop in there. They got a lot of new vinyl, so whatever. Um, also went to a couple other stores, did not buy anything, and I got most of the stuff here at. Um, a place called Luna Music, uh, which was a really great shop. And uh, they have these cool stickers. And there was, uh, I even have another sticker that's kind of clear that I'm going to put on my box here. But 
The, uh, yeah, they had, they really did have a lot of good stuff there. And uh, unfortunately, we had to eat and get to the show. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to spend. Uh, I was, I was looking for particular records and, um, uh, you know, uh, I, um, I found some of them. Uh, another thing that I got that I thought was really super cool was this uh, poster from the gig. Uh, John here, Jimmy here, and then we have all of these other characters. You know, we got Miles, the Dalai Lama, Gandhi, uh, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Bird is up here. Uh, just all kinds of cool uh, little things going on. And even cooler, this thing glows in the dark. Signed and numbered. It says Meeting of the Spirits here. John McLaughlin in the Fourth Dimension. Jimmy Herring. And the Invisible Whip. Um, yeah. Against my better judgment, I'm going to show you the records that I bought this week. There's only two, three, so don't get too hyped. Let me cut to that right now. All right, all right, all right. So, promise to make this quick. So basically, I walk into a shop here locally in town that I go to quite often, and somebody had brought in a pickup truckload of all sorts of records. None of them were in very good shape, but there were hundreds of them. And I started going through, and lo and behold, I found a couple records that I had to get. They were the right price, fairly inexpensive. I'll show you what they were. The first one, Pink Floyd Animals. This is a pretty beat copy. It plays all the way through, no skips. It's pretty nice. It's got the inner sleeve and, you know, I mean, it's just the coolest artwork with the flying pig and all that stuff, you know. I mean, this thing is super awesome. was glad to get it. Super cheap. Um, kind of a hard record to get, honestly. It's, it's probably one of their more popular albums. And, you know, uh, for good reason. Uh, Gilmore on there is fucking solid gold, okay? I mean, every guitar solo the guy plays on that is just mind expanding. Anyway, I digress. Uh, next. Un yes, un I have a sealed copy of the Jocko Passatorius solo record. If you don't have this, then you don't know shit about Jocko. This is where you learn who Jocko is. You if you if you just heard like weather report stuff, you know nothing of you know a little bit about Jocko, but this is where the man bears his soul. This is the album. This thing sounds amazing. I have multiple copies of this. I can't leave them behind when I see them, okay? I, w I will not. If I see one and it's cheap enough for me to get, and and it, I will not. Now, when I was in Indy, I did say that I bought another record from Karma. And I showed you the one copy of Are You Experienced that I bought from um, Luna. But when I was in Karma, bam, I found this one. Now, this was a pretty roached up copy, right? You know, it's got like all this stuff going on down here. I don't know if you can really see that. But it's pretty bad. But it does have the tri-colored label, which means that this is the very first U.S. press. And I didn't want to leave it behind. It has several issues. <laughs> including um, a slight bend in the record, turns out. It still plays fine, but this thing is really beat, and um, I don't know, it's kind of cool having an old beat-up record every once in a while. Uh, at some point, I might find someone that needs this record, and I'll just give it to them. I mean, heck, it's the first press. <laughs> Uh, what am, who am I kidding? I'm keeping this record. It's going to stay in my collection forever. Anyway, whoo -hey, that's all the records. The McLaughlin Show was badass. Stay tuned.
That's all I can say. Seriously, there's a bunch of cool stuff coming up in the very near future. Lots of cool gear-related stuff. Lots of cool music-related stuff. Keep watching. Thank <laughs> you.